speaking of wokery, let's talk about New Year's Eve because we had our own controversy here in Sydney after our national broadcaster was criticised for politicising its fireworks coverage with an Indigenous rap performance. But it seems there was a similar experience in London. Oh, it was terrible. We had uh, Sadiq Khan, uh, the mayor of Woke, uh, London's kind of pipsqueak dictator, as some of us like to refer to him. He turned the fireworks display into basically a moral lecture to the city and to the whole nation, really. They, there were huge voiceovers from the sky, like the, you know, the gods of woke thundering down on the little people, telling us about the wonders of immigration, the wonders of gay marriage, how, how brilliant the National Health Service is, uh, the, how great it is to be a diverse city. It was just this hectoring lecture to the little people when we wanted to just celebrate the new year. And what it really showed to me is just how ubiquitous wokeness has become. There really is no escaping this. Even, you know, adverts on TV, uh, movies, the education system, politics, and now even the fireworks display on New Year's Eve. Everything has to come wrapped up in this woke ideology. I think people are getting sick of being constantly beaten over the head with this ideology. And we just want a few a few days off from being lectured to by people like Sadiq Khan. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? A little break from it all. But they just can't let it happen. Now, I can't let you go without talking about Harry and Meghan. 2023 was a bit of a shocker for the couple, to say the least. There was, of course, Prince Harry's memoir and the Netflix documentary, among so many other examples. What do you think 2024 will bring for the couple? Well, it's hard to tell, but, you know, lots of people are saying that 2023 seemed to be their annus horribilis, to use a, a phrase that the Queen once used. And I think that's right. You know, they had some success. The Netflix documentary did OK. Harry won part of his legal trial against the press here, which I think is a very worrying attack on, on freedom of the press. Uh, but, you know, their, their uh, podcast has bombed and Harry's book shocked a lot of people with the way in which it reveals so much about the private life of Prince William and, and King Charles and Camilla and lots of other people. I think people are sick and tired of this whining celebrity couple from California. You know, we are going through a cost of living crisis, an energy crisis. There are wars taking place. The last thing we need to hear is this woe is me act from literal royals who live it up in mansions in California. People are sick of their whining, their narcissism, their self-pity. What we want from royals is a bit of, you know, public duty, a sense of loyalty, a sense of respect for the country. And we've never got that from Harry and Meghan. You're so right. Uh, but we are not sick of sending them up here on this programme. Thank you so <laughs> much, Brendan O'Neill. Appreciate your time.